modern marvels. A bowling alley. It looks pretty much the same as it did in decades past. Friends milling about, talking, drinking, eating, and bowling. There's something reassuring about all this sameness. But it's a lie. Out on those lanes, a revolution is actually taking place. Over the last few decades, the number of perfect games bowled, a score of 300, has risen dramatically. The source of this runaway inflation? A ball is juiced. It won't bowl for you, but it'll make a good bowler a lot better. It's all about putting the ball into the pocket, the space between the head pin and either of the two pins right behind it. What you want the ball to do is actually make a turn towards the pocket. Now what they found is, is that a larger entry angle into the pocket actually creates the higher probability for creating strikes. As it enters into the pocket itself, the ball actually dances around the pins once it hits it. And it actually allows the ball a greater chance of being able to intermix into the pins, causing them to scatter around. The lane itself makes hooking the ball hard. The front two-thirds are coated in a layer of mineral oil. This protects the lane from ball impact, but diminishes a bowler's control. To make a ball that can roll straight through oil, and then still hook sharply just as it gets to the pins, you need complex chemistry on the outside, and sophisticated physics inside. You can think of a bowling ball as having a core and a shell. You can think of it just like the earth. It has a core in it, uh, there are different layers of the core, and then there's the outer part, which we call the veneer. Prior to the 1980s, bowling balls had spherical, symmetrical cores that did little to help a bowler put hook on the ball. Since then, designers have developed solid, asymmetrical cores placed at the center of the ball that have increasingly helped steer it. We can actually literally put a steering wheel inside of the bowling ball to get it to behave the way we want it to behave. But how do asymmetric cores help steer the ball? Depending on where the finger holes are drilled on the surface of the ball in relation to this core, a pro shop can reduce the spin for someone inclined to high revolutions and add more to a low spin bowler's ball. In addition, with each revolution of this ball, the core is altering the spin slightly so that a fresh part of the ball comes into contact with the oiled lane. You can see these lines here. These lines are oil. Every rotation is a different line. What that means is that as the ball goes down the lane, it's seeing a fresh surface. What you get is a ball that is very aggressive down the lane when it sees friction because down the lane it's dry, so it makes an aggressive move. In addition to steering, cores of different densities vary the weight of the balls from 6 to 16 pounds. All bowling balls have a uniform outer dimension, 27 inches in circumference. Heavier or lighter mineral fillers create cores and ultimately balls of various weights. We take the polyester resin, we mix it in with mineral fillers, we blend that up into a milkshake type mixture. With the help of a catalyst, this mixture goes from liquid to solid in two minutes and is then removed from the core mold. The core is drilled so that it can be mounted on a pin in another mold. We fill that area with a polyester resin, a very light, low-density product that goes around the outside. We're pouring a core every 12 seconds all day long. These go into a rack and have about a 45-minute cure period. The high-tech core's pocket-seeking mission is aided by an outer shell, or veneer, made from a high-performance urethane, a porous additive-enhanced resin, that has improved traction over the hard, smooth polyester balls of the 1970s. This veneer can be applied to the ball in almost no time. We take that large core with a hole in it, we suspend it on a pin inside a mold, and then we pour that, the shell around it. This is a very violent chemical reaction. This goes from a completely liquid state to a completely solid state in less than 30 seconds. What we've done with that urethane polymer is actually created a kind of a chemical cocktail. We actually can create a rigid, porous type material. So it's like a polymer sponge. 
so, the ball soaks up oil as it cuts through it. As a result, it creates friction earlier and produces a sharper hook before reaching the pins. Once the veneer has been applied, the balls go into giant grinders that trim and smooth them to size. Logos are then etched and painted. And the balls are given a sanding for a final finish. Not surprisingly, older bowling balls were fairly unsophisticated. Though bowling has ancient origins, the clearest antecedent is a German ritual called Kegel, which originated in the 4th century and used a stone ball. The modern form of the game moved indoors in the 19th century and featured the first manufactured bowling balls. Early on, bowling balls were made out of wood. This is actually from the early 1900s, late 1800s. Most of those bowling balls were made out of lignin vita, common name for it's like iron wood. And it's a very dense, hard type material. The next breakthrough came in the early 19th century, the rubber bowling ball. Hardened rubber has got the term ebonite material, and that's basically where our company name is generated from, is that term hard rubber. Over a hundred years old, the Ebonite Company has seen every advancement of ball technology. But just how much hook can enhanced physics and chemistry put on the ball? We've got an expert bowler, Chris Muldrow, who will throw two different balls exactly the same way. The difference in performance is in the balls. The first ball we're going to look at is a polyester ball. Uh, what you're going to see from the polyester ball is a very, very straight trajectory, not a lot of hook. The problem that the ball faces is that it's so smooth and so slick that it can't create friction in the back end of the lane. As a result of that, the ball never gets into a hooking motion that he's trying to create. In addition, the ball has a spherical core that is essentially neutral. It doesn't help the ball hook. The difference between that ball and most of my other balls is that it's like a weaker shell and a weaker core, so it goes very straight. The second ball is a high-performance ball with an advanced cover and core. Now what you have is the perfect match between a core that wants to make the ball hook and a cover that wants to make the ball hook. So in this shot, he'll strike. But no matter how much care goes into a bowling ball, there's always some guy who just has to do it his way.